Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here. And today we are going to dive into the Vim text editor. There's a question that folks ask me frequently is, Mike, why do you use Vim in all of your videos? There's other stuff like VS Code and IDEs and so on. And my answer is at the end of the day is I'm most efficient in Vim. It's the thing that saves me time. It doesn't get in my way. So I really, really like working in Vim, whether that's for small or large code bases. The trick is just learning Vim, which has a little bit of a learning curve, but as you're gonna see, it's not that hard to get started. So with that said, let's just go ahead and dive into a terminal here. Uh, and you'll notice that I've enabled a tool called screen key. So whenever I type, so let me just go ahead and say, when I type, you see what I type here. Okay, just so you can follow along with the different Vim key presses. So what you can go ahead and do to get started with Vim is make sure that you install it. So something like sudo apt-get install Vim. If it's not already installed or VI, the old variant, then you can use it. And NeoVim is also another acceptable tool to use. That's what a lot of folks are also uh, installing these days but I'm just gonna use the plain old vanilla Vim because I'm pretty sure that's what everybody has. So anyways, when you start Vim or Vim improved, which uh, Vim is an improvement on the VI editor, uh, basically what this gives you is a blank uh, buffer here, which you can write into. So the first thing that you need to know is how do I write text? Well, in Vim, there's different modes. And this is one of the things that I think gets beginners a little bit confused or maybe are intimidated by the different modes, but it actually is what allows you to move most efficiently and keep your hands off of the mouse. That way you can just use your keyboard and again, move faster. And in some ways that's even better for your hands. I've heard folks say that uh, versus scrolling and quick uh, and clicking all the time. So that's another reason why I like using Vim just for longevity. So anyways, uh, something that we can do here is hit I, that's one of the ways to go into insertion mode. And you'll see the mode that we're in in the bottom left corner. If I hit escape, that gets me out of that mode. And then I'm in just the normal mode here. Okay, so let's go ahead and try that again. I for insertion mode. And now I can type like, you know, regularly. Uh, as you'd expect in a text editor. You can hit enter, delete, the, the up and down arrow will move you up and down and so on. So again, you could just use Vim as this with this much <laughs> basics uh, and be able to write code or edit files, which could be a really important skill, especially if you're working remotely, for instance, and need to SSH into a server and modify something. This is enough to get you half the way there. Now we need to know how to save and exit. So if I go ahead and hit uh, escape to go into normal mode, colon, which puts me in command mode, so I can type in some command here. And then I'll write this file out and I put the text name here, uh, sample.txt, I'll hit enter. And you'll see that we have written or saved this file here. And then to save from then on, I can just hit colon and then W and make more changes there. So let's go ahead and maybe modify this by going into insertion mode, hitting escape and then colon and W to write here. Now let's go ahead and just exit this file as well. I'll hit Q. And then if I list out my files, you can see I have this sample here. Okay, so let me just go ahead and remove that sample file here. And that way we can get rid of it. So those are the basics. You could just have that much knowledge for being able to open, save a file in Vim. So again, you could just do Vim and then a file name to open it. And you'd be fine with having some text editor that you can use remotely. But again, I want to show you where the power is in Vim. So I'm going to open up a video from one of my recent C++ videos just so we can see uh, Vim in action here. So here is uh, a file here. We've got uh, about 47 lines. And you can see that I'm using some shortcuts to jump around the file here. In fact, I can jump around to the middle of the file here uh, or the lower side here. And you'll be able to kind of chase my cursor here and then ZZ to sort of center in on it. So there are some nice uh, search functionalities for this. I can also jump to specific lines here and jump to uh, specific words uh, in those lines. So again, let's go to line, say 23 here. Let's skip to orc, and then I'm going to highlight all the instances of orc here. And then I can move between the uh, next uh, instance of orc here. So you can see my cursor moving around at uh, 23, 24, and 41, just by hitting the N keyword here. So again, this is really, really uh, quick and efficient for us to move around and navigate our file. So these are the types of things that we can do in normal mode that, again, make Vim relatively a fast editor versus scrolling over our wheel. I can just highlight something and then move to the next instance of it. Now, we can also say, well, this is a little bit distracting. I don't need to know anything about this orc here. So let's do no highlight here by entering command mode and getting rid of that. And let's move to back of the top of the file with GG here. Okay, so let's assume we have a relatively big file. Again, something that we have to you know, scroll through here. 
uh, and actually manage. And we want to be able to save our time here. So again, let's say we go to line 46 here, uh, which is towards the end of our file. Again, you can see this retard here. And I can actually just use control O here uh, to go back to where I was or control I again to uh, just basically jump back to different places where I was in the file here. So again, that's an easy way to navigate. And this actually works if you have different files. Uh, so for instance, let's go ahead and open up another file here. Now I'm going to open up this with a different uh, tab here. Uh, hit tab here. Let's see what other videos I've got. Got a good hand video uh, with some code here. And now we've got two tabs open here. So just like a regular IDE, you can see that this is working uh, here. We've also in Vim got syntax highlighting a lot of these quality of life improvements. I've also drawn a bar here. That's what this red thing is. So I know if I have more than uh, I think 120 characters, um, my source is getting too long. Uh, I can go between tabs. So go between uh, tab. Uh, and switch between these relatively quickly. Uh, I can other, always do other interesting stuff here. Like I could split this tab here. So again, this is a relatively big file here. Uh, and I'm gonna keep my hands off the arrow keys and just use J to move down and K to move up here. Again, minimizing the time I have to move my hands between different uh, positions here. That's what Vim's all about. But I've split this file so maybe I could keep character in context control W and then I can use J or the down arrow key again to move to this other window and gain context uh, from something else here. So I can scroll down and see some of this other code here. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and move my cursor somewhere, ZZ to center it, uh, maybe on somewhere that's uh, of interest here. Uh, in fact, I don't always wanna be holding down J here. I could do J and then 10 to move down uh, 10 lines here. Uh, and then I'm, I've jumped down below the cursor. Let's go ahead and move up though here. So control W and J here, uh, and let's do K and then uh, I'll enter five times here, uh, or five K, excuse me, uh, and that'll move me up uh, five lines here. So there's quick ways that you can jump around your code. Now within a line, I might wanna just do find and then a uh, left parentheses, and that immediately moves me to the parentheses. You can see how they're lined up here. Uh, and I can find the next parentheses, uh, and that's a quick way to, again, move around here. So again, lots of different shortcuts that you can slowly master in Vim to move around uh, in your code here. Uh, now let's say I've done something else weird here. Um, let's actually highlight this block. So this is now in visual mode. Uh, so let me slow down there a little bit. I hit V here and K to move up here. Or I can actually do some things like, uh, let's move to the end of the line, dollar sign, and you'll notice that the matching uh, curly brace is there. I'm gonna enter visual mode here and select everything with the percentage sign. And now I can hit D to just delete that if I wanted to get rid of a bunch of code. Uh, I probably don't wanna do that, so I can just undo. Uh, but let's again do that V and then percent to highlight everything. And I'm just gonna hit the equal sign, which will nicely format my code if it gets you know uh, messed up here. Uh, so let's mess up our code a little bit. I'm going to delete up into the word. Uh, let's do this a couple of times here. Oops, something like that. Uh, let's go ahead and hit V again, the percent. And for this block, I'll hit equals. And everything's nicely indented. So you don't have to waste your time tabbing and shifting and uh, doing all these different things uh, with your code. So again, just a few different examples. Uh, now let's close that off here. I didn't like that I couldn't really see a lot of the code here. So I'm just going to do a V split here. Uh, now I can see both my windows side by side. Uh, maybe something that's not really important here. So um, let me go to the bottom of the or the top of the file here uh, on this one. I'm going to do control W and then now um, uh, L to move me to the other window here. Uh, let's do ZZ just so I can center around my cursor. And I can see where I'm at here. Uh, now I'm just kind of looking at things to gain context and then I'm going to use GT to move to that other tab here look at some stuff and say, well, I don't know it was there. So I want to sort of follow what my last motion was. And again, hit control uh, O and I to kind of cycle back uh, and forth here. Uh, and this will actually bring me to the other um, tabs as well. Um, so I can actually see, you know, if I jump somewhere, what exactly is going on here. Uh, so anyways, those are a few different things that you can do with Vim on the navigation. Now let's take a look at, you know, modifying some of our code here. Um, let's say that I want to just create a bunch of these classes here. So I've got uh, no combat here, and I want to sort of uh, duplicate this interface. So I've uh, copied it by doing V and selecting the whole uh, class here. So I could do Y to yank that, which is the equivalent of uh, sort of copying things. P to paste it uh, a few times here. Uh, or I can also just do a dot, which repeats the last command I did. Uh, so if you did something that was a little bit more complicated or a few steps, you could just do dot here. Uh, and I've created a bunch of these here. So uh, let's actually um, 
let's just hide these for now. So I can fold them with Z fold here. And now all of a sudden I've got my uh, code that I didn't want to see here. Uh, and let's open that up. So Z open. Uh, and now I can, you know, see all that code that I've duplicated. So you get cold code folding and all these different things here uh, that you'd expect here. Uh, let's actually just do D to delete that. Uh, o to open a new line here. Uh, and now I'm in the insertion mode so I can uh, type out comments here. Okay. So anyways, these are some of the different things for moving around and navigating your code that can be uh, very, very quick. Uh, a few other things that I want to show you just to show off uh, Vim here. Let's go to another tab here. Uh, and let's go to the top of this file. Um, let's do a replacement here just to show how we search and replace things. Uh, so again, I can select this line here and then I could go to uh, say, uh, let's actually, yeah, let's go to line seven here. I'll go into visual mode. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, jump down seven lines, jump down another three. Let's do that again. Um, and that'll select my whole uh, structure here. Again, we could do a few different things here. Uh, but now I'm gonna do a, a command here uh, S for substitute slash uh, character, and let's just call it, I don't know, my character or something. And then I'm going to do that text replacement uh, for just that selected block here. Okay, now I can also do things uh, as global replacement for the whole file. Uh, I usually just end up selecting everything, and then I'll do uh, up here, and I'm just going to hit up on my arrow key to go back in my history and do that same substitution here. Uh, again, that works just the same here. And you can see it updating on both sides, uh, again, just so you have the, the context there. Um, so any basic thing that you have in your text editors, you again have with Vim here. Uh, there are plugins that you can install here. Uh, let's see if I, uh, let's split this window one more time here. I've got this context plugin here. Uh, you'll notice that it's drawing a line here. This is called context.vim. Um, and it's showing me what the curly brace is that I'm sort of indented in. So if you're doing a lot of code editing, for instance, this is a really nice uh, plugin to have here. So if you get lost, you can kind of keep track of where you are. Uh, so again, let's do uh, control L to move to the bottom, ZZ to kind of center our screen. And we can see that I'm within the main function for this code that I'm editing here. So again, little nice like quality of improvement things. Uh, you can see that I'm splitting my window here in any orientation. You can do Control W R to rotate these windows uh, and reorganize and resize them. Uh, let's go ahead and do a little bit of uh, resizing here uh, with windows. Uh, so one simple way to do it is just with Control W and Shift, and then you know pick the direction that you want with the uh, angular braces here. Uh, and then you can do like you know set the actual size or uh, repeat um, you know multiple times. So if I do, again, uh, control W, but this time I do a four in front of it, and then the angular bracket, it's gonna do it uh, four times instead of one step. So control W, uh, nine, uh, again, a bigger step here, control W, uh, let's do nine, but in the opposite direction. And again, that's you know a way to do things faster. Um, so these sort of motions or commands that you sort of build up and, and write are uh, what saves you a lot of different speed in Vim. So anyways, let me go ahead and just close down screen key. I'm just going to do Q here or QA to uh, quit all the windows. Uh, now I have made some changes here. I don't want to save those changes. So I'm going to do an exclamation mark uh, and that will get rid of everything. Um, <laughs> so again, that was just a quick little tour of Vim. If you enjoyed that or thought it was interesting, um, I do have a course here. So you can go ahead and check that out. My Vim text editor course um, where I take things a little bit more slowly. But, um, you know, folks ask me quite frequently, Again, why Vim? And I hope that gives some sort of answer um, as to some of the productivity things that you can do, just being able to move through code very quickly. Um, you know, if you go through all the effort of splitting your windows and these types of things, you can save your session in a project just as shown. So I think it's useful just to be able to see what some of the features are. And these are the types of things that are kind of fun to learn if you get stuck on a programming problem or if you're just doing some other project and you want to focus on increasing your productivity some other way, uh, learning some different Vim uh, shortcuts, uh, the different uh, plugins that might be available are another way that you can just kind of enhance your productivity a little bit and make development fun. I find it's fun to actually use these text editors where you can move very fluidly with text because ultimately text is our medium as a programmer. So it's nice to be able to sort of master and control that. And the other great thing about Vim is once you learn it, you can use those key bindings in a tool like VS Code if you're still more comfortable, if you want to use your mouse. Uh, again, there's a way in Vim to use your cursor if you want, uh, but most people try not to use it. Uh, so again, th these bindings or learning these skills aren't totally lost and totally locking you into a terminal. So if you just like some of the things, you could again sort of enable or disable uh, that functionality as you need. 
Uh, and chances are, if there's something that you're missing from your text editor, I didn't even show you things like IntelliSense and code completion, uh, you know, all those things or plugins are available in Vim. So it's a really, really rich uh, culture, uh, or I should say just a like full environment with all sorts of interesting uh, plugins and, and these types of things uh, available for Vim. So anyways, that was just a quick little, I haven't talked about Vim in years on this channel other than you just seeing it, but again, some different things that are nice to use and allow you to move very quickly in uh, Vim. The final thing that I'll say about it, other than it being a really nice tool for loading fast and so on is, I like having all the screen real estate, which is just my code. There's no distractions or other editors and so on. Uh, so that's the reason that I like Vim as well. So anyways, folks, hope you enjoyed that. Feel free to check out the course or on my YouTube channel, there's other free videos about Vim if you wanna check those out uh, that can help get you started like this one. And uh, as always, thank you for your time and attention. And please, in the comments below, if you are a Vim user, let me know your favorite plugins, you know, tools that you use frequently, things that might be helpful to other beginners who are just thinking about Vim at this point. Anyways, folks, thank you for your time and attention. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope that answers a popular question that I get in the comments about why I'm still using Vim. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.